As 2007 neared its end, the Iraq War was progressively winding down. President Bush had declared victory and efforts to rebuild were in progress. Sergeant Matthews, along with his observer, Sergeant Isaac, were sent to a pipeline construction site deep within the Iraqi desert. The American workers in the area had been tragically killed, and the duo's mission was to identify the culprits before any new workers were dispatched. Securing a position hidden behind an amalgamation of bushes and rocks, they kept a vigilant watch over the area under the relentless heat of the desert sun. Twenty hours passed without any significant activity. Growing restless, Matthews began to doubt the presence of any remaining Iraqi soldiers, theorizing that a team had attacked and then evacuated the site after their mission was accomplished, given the state of the bodies. However, Isaac saw no evidence of such a large group's movements. He suggested that the workers' deaths, all from precise headshots, might be the handiwork of the infamous professional Iraqi sniper, Juba. Matthews found it hard to believe that a single individual could be responsible for such carnage in less than 30 seconds. Tired of waiting, Matthews inspected the site personally, ordering Isaac to cover him. Isaac protested, explaining that his scope was becoming foggy. Matthews teased him for not replacing it earlier, but Isaac was attached to this scope. It had once belonged to a fallen comrade. As Matthews examined the bodies, he began to consider the validity of Isaac's theory. He noticed the precision of the headshots and moved to the center of the site to deduce the potential trajectory of the shots. Ignoring Isaac's urgent pleas to return to cover, he was suddenly struck by a bullet and collapsed in agony. Panicked, Isaac attempts to reach his injured comrade, zigzagging to evade potential gunfire, but just as he nears Matthews, a bullet finds his leg. Injured, Isaac is compelled to abandon Matthews and find refuge behind a crumbling wall. Despite his wounds, Matthews manages to contact Isaac, ordering him to summon backup. Before making the call, Isaac notices the severity of his leg injury and uses a belt to stanch the bleeding. He reaches for his radio to communicate with their base, only to discover that his antenna has been shot off, leaving him without a signal. Matthews contacts Isaac again, insisting that he locates the sniper so he can retaliate. Despite Isaac's caution that any movement could attract the sniper's attention, Matthews is insistent. With his hand injured from falling debris, Isaac creates an opening in the wall to position his scope. In the meantime, Matthews attempts to reach for his rifle, but succumbs to unconsciousness due to blood loss. Determined not to suffer Matthews' fate, Isaac uses a knife to remove the bullet lodged in his leg, enduring agonizing pain. Afterward, he hastily bandages the wound before blacking out. Later, an unusual sound from his earpiece stirs him awake. An officer from the base is on the other end, and Isaac immediately starts to recount the events. However, he becomes suspicious when the officer asks him several peculiar questions. Remarkably, the officer urges Isaac to either reveal his precise location or fire his weapon into the air, supposedly to direct the helicopters for their supply drop. Isaac responds that such actions would defy standard procedure and could endanger his position. His suspicions intensify when he detects a non-American accent in the officer's it occurs to him that this is Juba, the sniper, who has hacked the radio frequencies to set a trap. Isaac confronts him, but Juba starts a series of probing questions rather than ending the call, expressing a desire to understand Isaac better. Isaac tries to re-establish contact with the base through his radio, but his efforts prove futile. Despite Isaac's reluctance to engage in conversation, Juba continues to ask unrelated questions and threatens to reshoot Matthews, an unsettling prospect if Matthews is still alive. In response, Isaac consents to converse, but insists that Juba initiates the dialogue. Isaac sketches a map of their location in the dirt as they talk, hoping to infer the bullet's trajectory and pinpoint the sniper's position. Juba presents himself as a typical Iraqi citizen fighting for his nation, a claim Isaac finds oddly personal. Isaac retorts by scoffing at Juba's motives, 
arguing that his actions are causing harm to those genuinely striving to develop the country by constructing schools, pipelines, and other infrastructures that could boost the local economy. Juba laughs at this, retorting that any profit generated would inevitably revert to the U.S. As the conversation continues, Juba persistently probes into Isaac's personal life. Yet Isaac remains reticent about his private affairs, leading Juba to threaten to reshoot Matthews. By now, Isaac no longer considers his threats to be credible. To demonstrate his sincerity, Juba reveals the name of the previous owner of Isaac's scope, a fallen comrade. This detail echoes Matthew's earlier teasing. With his scope, Isaac spots a radio on one of the fallen soldiers and tries to pull the body toward the barricade's edge. But even with a stick, he can't reach it without risking exposure. He then attempts to hydrate from his bottle, only to discover it's empty due to a hole, an act of sabotage Juba confesses to having intentionally made. Juba gloats about his precision in shooting the bottle, antenna, and Isaac's leg, strategically trapping Isaac and relishing his slow demise over the radio. Examining the bullet he'd removed from his leg, Isaac deduces the type of weapon Juba is using by asking sly questions. Isaac brands Juba as a terrorist, a label that prompts Juba to chuckle and point out the irony of Americans illegally entering foreign territories, armed and ready to kill. While Juba talks, Isaac continues his calculations. Looking through his scope, he concludes that Juba is concealed beneath a massive heap of rubbish. It's clear that Juba is a pro. Despite this, Juba downplays his reputation as a renowned sniper, insisting he's just an ordinary Iraqi man. Isaac speculates from his accent that Juba might be a former U.S. official who turned a traitor. But Juba brushes this aside, claiming he only kills in self-defense. Isaac, in turn, narrates the tale of meeting his best friend in childhood and their joint enlistment as adults. Dehydration and fatigue start to significantly impact Isaac. He collapses, listening to Juba's grim promise of stapling his tongue to his chest. Isaac tries to fool Juba by waving a jacket and helmet tied to his rifle over the wall, but the ruse is unsuccessful. The helmet falls on the other side of the barricade, leaving Isaac without head protection. The blunder at the sniping point moves him to tears. As time passes, Isaac grows desperate enough to contemplate taking risks. Isaac makes a dash for a fallen soldier's bag and radio, dodging a hail of bullets from Juba as he retreats to the barricade. The bag yields water and candy, which Isaac hastily consumes. Unfortunately, the radio is also dysfunctional. As punishment for Isaac's daring move, Juba fires at the wall, inflicting substantial damage to Isaac's scope. Unexpectedly, Isaac hears a stir on his earpiece. Matthews is still alive. Isaac urgently communicates Juba's position to Matthews, who fishes out a piece of metal to observe the trash pile. As Matthew slowly reaches for his rifle, Isaac keeps Juba engaged with casual conversation, learning that Juba was once a teacher in Baghdad who turned to vengeance after his students were killed in an American strike. The rubble Isaac uses as a cover is the remnants of that same school. Juba questions why Isaac clings to his damaged scope. When Isaac remains silent, Juba threatens to reshoot Matthews. Desperate to save Matthews, Isaac reveals he keeps the scope as a memento of his late friend, whose death was due to Isaac's error, a source of enduring guilt. Meanwhile, Matthews positions his rifle and blindly fires at the trash pile, unloading all his ammunition while Isaac also fires to mask Matthew's shots. As Matthews is about to reload, Juba fires back, hitting him in the shoulder. Isaac implores Matthews to crawl towards him for safety. But when Isaac nears the edge to assist, Juba lands a fatal shot to Matthew's head. Isaac witnesses his death and breaks down, expressing his longing for home. Juba assures Isaac he won't be shot if he wishes to leave, but Isaac remains skeptical. Later, Juba questions why Isaac is still present despite the war's conclusion. After a pause, Isaac confesses he had accidentally killed his previous sniper partner in an attempt to take down an enemy, a truth he has been concealing, blaming his friend's death on enemy forces. Suddenly, Isaac hears chatter on the radio and rushes to check it, elated to listen to voices. 
His joy is short-lived, though, as he discovers he can hear but can't transmit messages due to radio damage. Isaac is stunned when he hears Juba join the radio conversation, calling for help using Isaac's name. Isaac realizes that Juba has been hacking into American communications, feigning to be a distressed soldier to attract backup teams to the area and then ambush them easily. Isaac attempts to intervene in the conversation, but his efforts are futile. Sometime later, Isaac awakens to the agonizing sensation of a crow pecking at his leg wound. Seeing that even the birds believe him to be dead, Isaac decides to take a gamble. He fetches Matthew's rifle using a makeshift contraption of rope and stick and then aims it at the pile of rubbish. Just then, helicopters enter the vicinity, inadvertently revealing Isaac's location, not realizing it's a trap. Intent to protect the arriving soldiers, Isaac pushes against the wall, causing it to collapse and produce a cloud of dust that obscures his position from Juba. Isaac begins firing at the trash pile, uncertain if he's hit his mark. To ascertain the result, Isaac finally rises from his position, and to his surprise, Juba does not take this opportunity to counterattack. This leads Isaac to conclude he has successfully eliminated Juba. The helicopters soon arrive and swiftly airlift Isaac on a stretcher, promptly administering medical aid. Isaac attempts to warn them about Juba, but the roar of the helicopter blades drowns out his voice. Unexpectedly, Juba opens fire on them, methodically eliminating the medical personnel one by one before striking the pilot. The helicopter rapidly descends and crashes, instantaneously killing Isaac and fulfilling Juba's twisted promise. Technically, Isaac wasn't shot. Juba once again infiltrates the U.S. communication lines, posing as an American soldier to entice his next group of unsuspecting victims. The helicopter's wreckage points homeward to the U.S. Remember to subscribe and enable notifications to stay updated with more videos like this. Thank you for watching.